recording. Uh, we're, we're gonna continue with our sword car explorations. So yeah, let's get started. Today I'm gonna try to cover the for loop and the for each loop. And this is kind of difficult topic, but I will give you a simple example. So there's a flow control here. There's a begin for loop and there's end for loop. There's also a begin for each loop and end for each loop. Okay, those four are kind of tricky, but I'll give you an example that so that it feels um, easy to understand. The first uh, example is going to be from here. Um, it's a question I asked to um, Punya Ahman. And Punya Ahman, I asked whether we can kind of vectorize using uh, Sorkar. Okay. Yeah, the, apparently we can. And we need to use begin for each and end for each for the loop. So we can get like um, all this vectorized value for extrusion, for example. And this is one example setup. So yeah, so let's let's get started. We can use um, a grid for now. So the way we work, as usual, we're gonna convert from component from mesh to component, and back from component to mesh. Okay, so this I will put it lower so it's easy to understand. And let's save this really quick. This is for each for loop. I'm gonna save it like that. And let's see. From object level, we want to go to components and deselect. And so we need to select some objects. Maybe select it randomly. So we already have randomness. And then we want to extrude or poke or inset. Those three operations should make it really clear what's going on. So extrude faces. And yeah, let's do that first, one by one. From component back to mesh. So object, edit, object, and then we should see some output. Okay. All right, so let's try to extrude a little bit. So we already have that happening. Oh, seems like it's actually following the 3D cursor. That's kind of neat. Okay, so I want to randomize the extrusion. We can't do it at the moment. We need to use loop. So we need to create flow control. At first, I actually made a mistake and use begin for loop and end for loop instead of for each. These two are interesting. They are similar, but they are really different. So for each will be for each phase that we are selecting, we're gonna try to extrude the face randomly using a constant called random flows. That, so th there's a lot of terminology there, but don't worry, it's, it's gonna make sense very, very quickly. So begin and end, and then for each of the component here, we want to Give random value. Okay, so now hopefully when we plug this and then play around with the number, it's gonna update. Uh, yep, there we go. It goes, the extrude is always going down. Maybe it's following the normal. That's okay. If you want to make it go up, so we use minus value and we randomize the seed. So what's inside the loop is actually just this node. And I think for now, whatever inside the loop is actually, we can, we can randomize using random float. We can vectorize this way. So that's basically the idea. 
Uh, let me have a look and then try to make sense of what's actually going on. Uh, we can still use the refresh mesh. Sometimes I have this node anyway just to refresh the mesh so I can I can check it out. Yeah, it doesn't give much information. So anyway. The one that's higher is that's object mode, the one that's lower, okay. So we know that we actually have control over this randomization of the extrusion. So that should be pretty clear. And we can use not just extrude faces. There are a few other operations that's easy to understand, like poke, for example. So instead of extrusion, we can poke. We can try to poke inside and use random value as well let's see if this actually works refresh the mesh yeah it's poking but we need to poke up it's also kind of interesting because this one is moving in a positive direction refresh the mesh poke offset so we have now random push random extrusion and random random poke maybe we need to update the mesh maybe relative offset okay yep this is pretty clear of course you can just use the the poke or just use the extrude but this is nice and then you can also add one more thing the inset so we can put the inset behind or after the poke maybe behind the extrude so instead also interesting we can because we can use random float and plug this into the, the thickness or the depth maybe the depth and update the whole thing now we can go back and play with this oops yep so that's uh, we can see we have control over the depth of our inset it's pretty neat so inset extrude and poke there's there, if you can see there's slight um, it's not an error it's not a bug but it's probably some kind of limitations where the seed is changing uh, not as you might expect slightly slightly weird there but still this is pretty cool and you can duplicate it and then smooth it so that's one that's one example I should actually save this that's one example with begin for each and and for each loop we still don't know what loop uh, I mean you probably understand what's looping is so it's doing the operation multiple time for each and every phase but I'll show you another example so new file save as this is begin and loop the other one is for each and this time I will show you the example similar to what we have before and I will be using poke as well but I will use icosphere and then the operation is going to be a simple poke and the for the flow control will be begin for and end for it's a bit of mouthful always to try to explain all those so conversion from mesh to component and then from component back to mesh at some point we have to do that for now create the icosphere first so icosphere and then the component we're gonna select randomly okay select random with percentage 
and here this is the where the magic is gonna happen component poke component goes inside and then we poke it and look at that looks look what's just happened it's doing the poke multiple times and this is kind of powerful it's almost like fractal i guess you can say it like that so it's almost like if you have if you have a cube and you're working in object mode now i just added a cube there accidentally i probably need to refresh this ah, okay and let's go back to where we have with this where we started so there's a start and there's an end if i increase the end you can see it's keep poking from the last selected phase well of course we start with a random random selected phase we can increase the subdivision but clearly it's it's operating on the last selected phase i can increase the start and the end uh, we are getting the same for now but if we adding start adding randomness then it's starting to get more interesting so if we have random inside the loop um, and then random constant random integer in here maybe we're gonna get something that's completely different yeah so it's randomly selecting the inside and then applying the same operation again and again so it's really quite complex what we have here i still don't exp i mean i still don't really explain the n and for each 100 percent but at least you you can see the difference between this one and the one we have previously but by observing this node setup the the previous one actually kind of operate on each phase and then extrude it and uh, while this one is it's actually operating for each phase but then it's, um, Can I explain this? So instead of using the poke, let's use extrude here and see what's gonna happen. And the value of this extrusion, we can still randomize using constant random float, random float. Okay, plug this in refresh the mesh you see the difference this one give it's kind of like running it one time and then it's extruding it like that while this one is keep extruding multiple time with with random value so for this one is slightly more advanced maybe than the for each one Maybe I shouldn't bring select random there to keep it simple. Okay. Okay, now. Well, in fact, the one I had before was actually a good example it's a better example than than the other one
but at least you know they two have different behavior of some sort. This one, with this one, you can iterate multiple times. With the other one, you don't. You don't actually have that ability. And this can get pretty complex. Be careful with the number. So that's with the begin for each and end for loop. With select random inside the loop, we get this kind of result. And the other one for each loop, it's much simpler. It's like doing it one time. But we still have control over the randomness over here. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. Even though I, I get confused at some point there. So begin for each, end for each. It's like doing it one time, at least from this example. And then we can actually have a random, like, vectorize multiple values going inside the input so we end up with something like this and the other one is more like fractal yep i some people like it this way the other one is also interesting all right so that's pretty much it um i just want to share this note setup hopefully you enjoy this one let me know what you think and i'll see you next time thank you bye